Hello, everybody. It is 4.30 p.m. Central Time here outside of Chicago. That means, uh, and it's a Wednesday, which means it is time for office hours on the Via Monstra Academy. Um, <clears throat> my name is Andrew Johnson, and with that, we will uh, start the trailer here. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, as you can see, I am uh, without my partner in crime uh, this week. I was hoping we were going to be able to uh, uh, to keep, be back together today, but uh, Johan has um, some uh, uh, some other things come up. Uh, Good things, uh, nonetheless, that uh, he's going to be taking care of this evening. So you are stuck with me today. Um, and with that said, I think I, I failed to mention here at the beginning that, uh, of course, here on Office Hours, this is where we can share some of our community updates uh, around Intune, Config Manager, Azure AD, or Entra, um, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, I hope that I will be able to uh, uh, keep everybody entertained for the next hour and, and hopefully you have some questions for me. Um, so I am going to go ahead and get started with sharing uh, some of the stuff that we have going on over the last week. Um, so first thing I wanted to share, uh, there, I, I think that we had discussed this, maybe Johan uh, mentioned it already, but Patch My PC had a PS App Deploy Toolkit uh, 101 webinar earlier today. Uh, I believe if you missed it that you can still sign up and at least get a recording. Um, so would recommend doing that if this is something that you are interested in. Uh, PSADT, of course, is a very popular uh, app deployment solution uh, uh, wrapper for PowerShell, or using PowerShell, rather. Uh, as part of that webinar, um, or at least during the webinar, a new version of uh, PSADT was released that had a number of uh, improvements and functionality changes uh, under the hood. <clears throat> um, so this is version 3.10. Uh, would recommend going out and grabbing that new one. Um, if you are using this in your organization, it is a whole uh, bunch of improvements and, and changes and fixes. So great stuff there to the uh, PSADT team. Um, our friend Ben Whitmore uh, released, so he has been maintaining a, a popular tool uh, for a while, the Win32 app migration tool. This is a PowerShell-based tool that will help you um, or can help you migrate your Config Manager applications over to Intune uh, with a little bit of automation. Um, so Ben's had version two of the tool in beta for a few months now, and just released a new beta version um, uh, over the weekend. Uh, most of the updates, um, uh, most of this were improvements and bug fixes. Most of these updates were surrounding detection methods. Um, so I wanted to point that out as well if you are using this tool. A uh, couple of other interesting things that weren't necessarily updates to uh, solutions. <clears throat> uh, Damien wrote a blog post on automatically being notified by mail or Teams when local admin accounts have been created on Intune devices. So I thought this was a pretty cool solution, uh, a remediation script, as well as... Um, sending information up to Log Analytics for any time a new uh, local admin account was created or added on our Intune devices. So this is another solution that will allow us to give a little, get a little bit more visibility into um, our Intune devices. I thought this was definitely worthwhile, uh, a worthwhile share as Damien's solutions often are. Um, I saw a pretty interesting update, uh, what I thought was interesting, from Microsoft. Uh, so this is an improvement to a feature that we have in Intune. Uh, the ability to, we've had the ability to expedite 
security updates outside of our standard uh, update rings if we're using Windows Update for Business and Intune uh, to update our devices. And Microsoft is rolling out the ability to expand this uh this feature so that we can expedite non-security updates as well. Um, it's expected that this is going to be available broadly uh, by April 1st, which I believe is Monday. Um, <clears throat> and what's, what's pretty cool about this is you'll see that if you've not seen this feature before, essentially in this policy, you can go in and choose a security update or uh, which are referred to as B releases. You can see here in the screenshot. Um, you can choose a security update and push this out to devices so that if we have a, um, a critical security release, something that needs to be patched quickly, we can do that with this feature. Um, so you go in here, you target that, that B release, um, assign it to the list of devices that you need updated sooner rather than later, um, and they're going to uh, Download, install that update, and then reboot um, either in zero, one, or two days is what you can specify in that policy. Uh, so the new addition to this policy is the ability to add these D releases you can see here. Um, and those are the non-security updates that come through at the end of the month. Uh, so this is a, a nice improvement, I think adds a little bit of flexibility to our uh, update processes and procedures in Intune. Now, um, unfortunately, I have not had a moment to sit down and watch these yet, uh, but uh, obviously going to be on my agenda here, but Microsoft has been putting on the Windows Server Summit uh, for the last couple of days, I believe tomorrow is the last day. Yes, it is. Um, so uh, this is a, a number of sessions on various topics, a couple of examples here, um, Microsoft Options for VMware migration, that one stuck out to me, what's new in Windows Server 2025. Um, uh, there's a session surrounding the next version of Active Directory, which we've talked about a little bit here on office hours, and a number of other things that are coming down the, the pipeline for um, Windows Server. Uh, so. For those of you managing servers out there, definitely recommend checking this out and seeing what sessions they have available. Um, we've found a lot of value in these uh, these uh, events, um, <clears throat> and I expect uh, the exact same out of this one. So I'll be checking that out myself over the next few days. And last but not least, um, though, if you have spent any time on Twitter uh, over the last week, um, uh, you may have seen some uh, conversation about this already. Um, some in, an important topic, I think, around autopilot and uh, uh, potential um, uh, security issues, or rather how we can secure autopilot a little bit more. Um, and I'm not going to get into the, the whole topic here because it's still been an ongoing conversation over the last week on Twitter. Um, but our friend Morris over on uh, MS Endpoint Manager uh, wrote, um, and Sandy, I'm sorry, uh, Morris and Sandy both uh, collaborated on this blog post, um, wrote a blog post sort of uh, about what autopilot is um, and how at a basic level it works and we're able to use um, autopilot both to register our devices as well as we can skip the registration process and inject an autopilot profile into a device so that the device gets enrolled into um, a tenant. And that's really what the conversation has been surrounding for the last week. Um, so, I'm not going to just uh, go through all of the details of the blog post here. I really encourage you, if you're using Autopilot in your organization, to go and read the details of this post. Um, but there are some things in here after stepping through the process that talk about how we might be able to secure this process a little bit more uh, through conditional access policies uh, and that sort of thing. 
very important with the things that we do, especially with our internet-based services and our shared services. Um, from my perspective, as we see um, more of a flattening of our uh, directory structures and our, in, and our systems management structures than we had previously, um, these things are becoming increasingly important to secure. Um, I, I wish Johan was here to talk through this, uh, have a good conversation about this with me, but perhaps we can spend a few moments on it next week. Uh, in the meantime, I recommend um, going and reading this blog post. It's a fantastic read. Um, so put that on your list. All right. So let's see. Uh, what we've got at the moment for questions. Uh, I see Gary is asking a question, can you demo how to expedite an update as it works today? Um, first of all, hey, Gary, good to see you. Uh, happy to see you last week up in, in Minneapolis. A fantastic event uh, last week up at the Twin Cities Systems Management User Group. Um, Absolutely, I can uh, I can pull up the Intune Admin Center here and see what we've got going on for expedited updates. So I've got my tenant here, my lab tenant. Uh, I'm going to close a few tabs here now that we've shared those. And if I go to my Windows devices, there are a few um, uh, update policies that we can configure. Update rings, feature updates, quality updates, and driver updates. What we're going to be looking at are the quality updates right here. And so if we go into these quality updates, you can see I have a policy here uh, that I created a while ago. I haven't, haven't modified it in a while. Um, but it's just called Deploy Updates Immediately. And if I click on this policy um, <clears throat> and look at the properties, you can see that I have the name, uh, no description, and then the specific update uh, at the time uh, that I wanted to expedite, as well as the number of days to wait before a restart is enforced. And then we're able to just assign this policy to a group. So it's pretty straightforward in how we create the policy and then assign it. Um, but let's go through, we've, we've got uh, uh, some time here to go ahead and just create a new policy. So let's say expedite, call it demo, expedite security. Well, let's call it expedite latest security update. And maybe that's something that I keep up to date on a monthly basis. So we give it a name. If we need to, we can give it a description. Um, we do have a couple of, of notes here. Um, so just, sorry, I'm just reading these real quick. Um, <clears throat> I do, the one that I do really want to point out is uh, this one right here. While expediting software updates can help decrease the time to get to compliance when necessary, it has a larger impact on end user productivity. The chances that they will experience a restart during business hours is significantly increased. So something to keep in mind when you are expediting uh, these updates is it's likely that your users will end up having a reboot. Uh, so Communication is important, even if you are um, uh, pushing out a security update uh, very quickly. Um, so from there, then we just choose our two settings. We can expedite the installation of the specific update. So you can see typically we're going to see the last three months in here. Uh, once we have the D releases, um, I'm, I'm curious if we'll see three months as well, but I expect them to be in this list. So we can just choose our latest uh, update, choose the number of days to wait before a restart is enforced. Maybe this is a really critical update that we need to get out. We can set to zero days uh, so that in theory, all of our devices will download, install the update and then reboot uh, pretty much right away. Um, but we can set this to one or two days as well. Um, so we go ahead and go click next, select a scope tag if needed, 
and then our assignments. I don't have any groups that I need to set up uh, here or that I have set up at the moment in order to expedite updates. Um, <clears throat> but I would like to just call some attention to the to the comment that I hear uh, that I have here from Gary. Uh, Brian Dam always says you should set one up before you actually need to use it, um, as the first time there's a delay of getting devices onboarded into the expedite process. So it's a fantastic comment. Um, recommend having this policy set up as well as a group of devices um, that may need this policy. Um, so if you are going to set this up ahead of time, what you could do is on a group of devices that are already at a current patch level, uh, go ahead and have this set to an older uh, Expedite version and test this. Of course, I have not tested this myself, uh, but you could have this on an older version so that everything is onboarded and ready to go should you need to expedite an update. Um, and then you can have this policy assigned to the group of devices uh, that you would want to expedite uh, your updates on. Um, so fantastic question, Gary. Thanks for, for asking that and adding the comment from Brian. Absolutely correct. Um, so this is great stuff. I'm, I'm really happy to see this feature expanded. Uh, I don't know how often I will uh, expedite um, non-security updates, but the ability to do it should we need it is always fantastic. Uh, we always appreciate the flexibility and control that uh, we can have here with these policies. Uh, so that is our, uh, our quality update uh, um, policies profiles uh, where we can expedite our updates. Now, um, see a comment here from Kurt on YouTube um, <clears throat> asking for the link for, um, so we talked uh, earlier this year, I believe, about how we can manage stale um, uh, device objects in Autopilot, Intune, and Entra. Um, and so I have those links uh, around here. I will absolutely share those again. So there were a couple of different options that we had talked about, um, depending on what you wanted to do. On the PowerShell gallery, actually, let me just copy these real quick. Paste these down here. On the PowerShell gallery, there is a script called Autopilot Nuke. Um, this is going to help you um, take a device should you need to remove all of the related device objects, um, remove it from Entra, remove it from Intune, uh, remove it from Autopilot and uh, on-prem Active Directory if, um, if required. Um, it's going to find all those objects and go ahead and delete them for you. Uh, there was also an Autopilot cleanup script uh, that Oliver put together. Uh, we can find that over here on GitHub. And then uh, a couple of others that I like to reference. Um, Joss Lieben has an automated stale device cleanup uh, using an Azure uh, automation runbook. So he's got a solution here, um, which slightly off topic, but he does have another blog post as well for cleaning up inactive guest users. Um, so if you're dealing with those, recommend checking that out as well. And Nathan McNulty, um, who's a fantastic follow, uh, by the way, both his blog and uh, on Twitter, uh, has just an incredible amount of information um, that he's sharing with the community. But Nathan's got a solution that will help do the same type of thing. Make sure our devices are being cleaned up um, and we're, we're keeping our, um, our tenants cleaned. So absolutely, Kurt, I will make sure these are dropped in the links for this evening. Hope those help. And if anybody else has any other solutions uh, that they're aware of um, out here, I suspect there are a lot of um, homegrown solutions maybe for doing, uh, for doing some of this cleanup and automation. Uh, but if there are any others in the community that we're missing, uh, please feel free to share. I'd be happy to add them to this, to this list. Um, but these are fantastic. <laughs> I see Johan's joining us uh, on his way to the airport in an Uber. Uh, hope you have, uh, thanks for joining us. Wish you were here and uh, do hope you have safe travels 
this evening. Um, well-deserved uh, vacation for sure. Um, and Johan says hello to everybody. All right. What else do we have going on? Any other questions at the moment? We do have, uh, let's see, 39 minutes left. Plenty of time for questions. Um, I should add, as uh, Johan would say, um, a little bit of a shameless plug, but we talked, uh, we've talked previously about uh, a mini course that Johan and I were doing, uh, Intune Automation using Microsoft Graph. Uh, so we ran that uh, mini course earlier today. I uh, would expect the uh, recording to be up here uh, probably sometime later this evening or tomorrow uh, if you missed it. Um, uh, go ahead and, uh, and hop on over here to the Viamastra Academy website and check out uh, what we talked about. It was a very fun session. Uh, we love talking about automation and how we can leverage graph more and more. Um, for those of you that have missed, and hopefully you have not, and I hope this isn't a surprise to anybody, um, the old MS Online module and Azure AD PowerShell modules um, are actually going to be deprecated uh, this weekend. After a couple of years of Microsoft talking about those uh, being deprecated, this is, uh, we're, we're finally there. Um, so those modules will eventually stop working. And so any automation you're using with those modules should go towards uh, using the Microsoft Graph SDK uh, that's available in the PowerShell gallery. Um, so if you haven't got the opportunity to get into that PowerShell module or anything uh, up to this point, or you've used it a little bit and you're looking for maybe a, a few more resources on how um, graph and some of its permissions work as well as what you can do with it in regards to Intune management. Um, please check this check this uh, out. And it was, of course, uh, again, as Johan would say, the price was right for it. Uh, this was a free webinar, so uh, feel free to sign up and get that recording once it is up. All right. Well, great stuff so far. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Anything else that I'm missing? Well, as always, everyone can always force me into uh, talking about Star Wars. It's Wednesday, so we've got Star Wars and X-Men 97 for those of you that uh, uh, watched the X-Men animated series of the 90s. Uh, that's an exciting thing. Um, kind of what I also have on my plans for later this evening. Um, but I won't talk too much about Disney Plus shows today. Uh, I'm just scrolling here to see, make sure I'm not missing any questions and see if we had any other uh, topics or information that I needed to share. All right, uh, I've got a question coming in here on YouTube. Uh, does SCCM and WSUS have built-in database cleanup tasks? Are there any community solutions you would recommend? Uh, so absolutely, I have a couple of uh, recommendations on how to um, keep WSUS basically functional um, in your uh, config manager infrastructure. Um, one, let me just make sure I can... I'll search over here. Um, so not directly related to um, uh, the database itself. 
but I've got, I, I still want to share this. Johan's got a great blog post um, around uh, uh, basically keeping the database uh, and IIS itself, uh, which is what um, <clears throat> your clients are going to use to contact uh, the WSUS pool. And um, basically we saw, I'm going to take a step back for a moment. A few years back, we saw a lot of issues with um, WSUS and IIS um, <clears throat> where uh, there was a bug that all of our endpoints were basically downloading the entire um, uh, catalog that caused a bunch of issues on our uh, config manager site servers. And so um, as part of this um, blog post from Johan, basically managing your uh, IIS app pool is one way to keep things clean and working. Um, now, Johan actually made a comment uh, here in the chat that the SUP role uh, does have some of those database specific cleanup tasks available to you. So if I go in here uh, to my site server and I'm gonna look at my software update point, uh, no, that is not where I want to look. I know exactly what he is referring to. There we go, WSUS maintenance. Um, so if you go to your, let's go through that again. If you go to your sites, you uh, right click on your site go to configure site components and software update point. And then we'll click on the WSUS maintenance tab. Here there are um, a few uh, tasks that you can select to keep that database clean. So declining expired updates, important. Uh, and then adding non-clustered indexes to the WSUS database. This is gonna keep things uh, running smoothly. Um, and, and quick, as well as removing obsolete updates from the WSUS database. And you want these to be happening on a regular basis uh, rather than having it happen when you have issues. Uh, because when you have issues, this could, um, could take you a long time to get through them, uh, let's say, if you have not been maintaining that database on a regular basis. Um, so those are the built-in solutions. Um, and over on uh, Johan's post here, there should be a couple of other solutions that he refers to. Yes, so one is uh, Brian Dam's solution uh, on <clears throat> WSUS uh, maintenance, essentially. So this is a fantastic solution. We've been referring to this for, for quite some time. Um, you can see there was an update as recently as 2020. It's been working very well. Um, so we've got Brian's solution and the other one that he referred to um, from Jeff. Yes, right here. Um, oh, that's just going to actually download the script for me. Uh, but basically, if you do run into... Um, issues where those updates, you have a bunch of updates that haven't been declined for some time. Uh, Jeff has a, a script here that will allow you to go through, decline the updates. Um, you can even run in a what if mode to see what will be declined and maintained. Um, and then clean those updates up. So a couple of great solutions here um, <clears throat> if you run into those issues. Uh, so some proactive solutions here, uh, as well as some uh, reactive ones if you get yourself into, uh, or your infrastructure gets itself into trouble. Uh, so I am going to make sure to post uh, this one here. And though they are linked, uh, we'll also post Brian's uh, as well.
All right. All righty. Uh, great question. So Kurt is asking for autopilot. Uh, how how do I confirm the dynamic user group has Intune licenses? So uh, if you do have a user group in Entra that you are assigning licenses to, um, there are a couple of ways that you can check for licenses. Uh, so I'll, I'll answer your question first, Kurt. Um, I have a group that I'm typically going, that I'm assigning licenses to in my tenant here. Uh, I happen to have a couple of them, um, but let's take a look at this one right here. SG just stands for security group, um, assign M365 E5 license. When I click on the group over here, we'll have our licenses tab. And once I click on that, you can see licenses assigned to this group. Of course, from here, I can check who are the members of this group. Um, so in this case, I have a number of users that are in here, and so they're going to receive the license that I have assigned to this group. If I want to troubleshoot a user specifically, there are a couple of ways that I can do that, or at least verify. Maybe I'm not troubleshooting, but verifying. So let's just go ahead and click on Boba Fett here. And I can click on licenses and see that he has a license assigned to uh, this user object, essentially. And it is the E5 developer uh, license that I just showed you. And we can see that it's actually assigned through that group. So that's a couple of different ways to come at it. We can look at the group itself if we know the name of the group. Otherwise, if we're trying to verify or troubleshoot an individual user, uh, this is the way that you can do it. There's also some capability of doing this in Intune, uh, though for autopilot, um, well, let's just see if this will, uh, for autopilot, you're going to need two different licenses. You're going to need the Intune license for the user as well as uh, Entra Premium, either P1 or P2. And so if we go here to troubleshooting and support, Let's pull up Boba Fett. Here we can at least verify the Intune license is available. Uh, so this isn't going to tell us whether or not we have um, uh, the Entra Premium license available, uh, but this is a way to verify the Intune license. So those are the couple of different ways that I would come at it. Hope that answers your question, Kurt. All right. Anything else out there? Any other questions or interesting things anyone saw over the last week? I know, uh, let's take a look back over here at the server summit. I know this is something that uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to diving into this over the next several days. Um, so just to give you an example, if we click on one of these, typically these events, um, <clears throat> they'll have a, a video um, talking about whatever the topic is. And then down here at the bottom, there's also a lot of Q&A, uh, which is a fantastic resource for... Um, for this particular topic. So always recommend uh, on these events. Um, this is this event, uh, I, I keep saying these events. This is very similar to the Intune technical takeoff um, or technical takeoff that's surrounding a lot of Intune management and Entra and things like that, Windows Update, uh, that Johan and I talked about uh, the last couple of years. They're they have hosted that event. Microsoft has hosted that event the last two years. And this is the same kind of format. Um, so not only are the videos a great resource of information, but the Q&A down at the bottom 
uh, both from the audience and then the responses from Microsoft uh, can really have a lot of great information in here as well. Great questions, uh, great responses. Yeah, good. Uh, Johan, uh, Johan's in here in the chat talking about uh, planning on downloading some of these videos for his flight. Um, so that's fantastic use of your time, I must say. Um, so that will be one that I'm definitely going to check out, the Active Directory one. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, the VMware one that I mentioned. Upgrade and update experience in, in Server 2025. And I think there was one for hot patching that I saw. Here we go, hot patching, improving server security and productivity. Very interested to see what that will look like uh, for us. Um, but of course that's not all. There are a lot of great sessions here. Those are the ones that are just sticking out to me. Oh, next generation SMB file services. Uh, that I think that'll probably be an interesting one as well. All right. So hopefully, uh, Johan, that sounds like there'll be a couple of, uh, sessions that we can talk about, uh, next week. When crossing my fingers, uh, you and I are back together hosting office hours again. All right. Any other questions? Oh, I saw Gary was taking off. Thank you, Gary. You have a great evening as well. Um, So a follow-up question on the WSUS maintenance. Are the built-in cleanup tasks sufficient enough to keep the database running at the optimal level, or should we implement at least one of the available community solutions? Um, Johan may have more to add to this, uh, but of course I would say uh, that is one of those. It depends. Depends on the number of... Uh, um, updates and products that you're uh, leveraging in your environment. Um, the more products and the more uh, update classifications that you're hosting, of course, the larger that database can become. Uh, same with the number of managed devices in your organization. That obviously can have an effect on performance of the database and the app pool. Um, it doesn't hurt um, uh, to run these community solutions from time to time, even in a smaller environment, I would say, just to verify things are looking okay. Um, uh, Johan, I had a great recommendation here, uh, Ola Hallengren's Index Rebuild. Uh, so let's look that up real quick. Um, so this is a fantastic SQL Server maintenance solution that will help you automate uh, rebuilding the indexes of a database, as well as backups, um, uh, backing up the database uh, and compressing the database as well. Uh, so recommend checking this out. Um, Steve Thompson. has a couple of great blog posts um, around this. Is this the one that I'm looking for? No. Uh-oh. Huh. Ah, Edge just crashed on me. That's not very nice. Um, Haha, here we go. Uh, so uh, Steve Thompson has a great blog post on how you can uh, quickly implement uh, Ola Hellengren's solution here. So I'm going to share Steve's blog post uh, alongside this website here. And these are going to help you keep your, uh, um, not only your WSUS uh, database up to date uh, and maintained well, but your site server database as well.
All right. Uh, James is asking here on YouTube, is there a non-MDM way to update a single pinned icon on the taskbar start menu? Uh, the verbs are now denied and would like to avoid manually creating the registry entry with PS exec. Um, a little bit of background been reassigned to SCCM only Windows 10 customer. What has been tried so far using the older import XML, hooking into the shell uh, com object and running the verbs for pin to uh, star now blocked. Manual creation of MDM settings in registry as system. So a non-MDM way to update a single pinned icon on the taskbar start menu. Hmm. Let me see here. I certainly know a couple of places to look, but let me see if I can find a solution for updating the single pinned icon. Okay. That's Windows 11. short at the moment. Um. Yeah, just a follow up comment here. Manual creation works. However, I'm wanting to avoid running a system. Uh, can be done via PS exec or as a service, but it would be nice to have a more elegant or ideally vendor supported method. Uh, so I'm not coming up with anything at the moment, um, but I will take that to see if I can come up with anything um, uh, before next week as some homework. Um, or if anybody else has a solution for, for James here, um, please share. So sorry, James, I don't have anything right off the top of my head. Um, just a follow-up comment here from Johan in uh, Steve Thompson's blog post on implementing um, <clears throat> Uh, Ola Hellengren's solution. This is also using a, a very shiny PowerShell module called DBA Tools. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with DBA Tools, um, including just just uh, pointing out Johan's comment here, um, the ability to verify a database backup. Um, so fantastic stuff. Uh, so DBA Tools, you'll find that uh, just on the on the PowerShell gallery, um, but also does have its own website. It's pretty widely used uh, at this point, so I'll share this link as well. DBA tools. And just a follow-up comment from Dan uh, here on taskbar pinning. Gave up on taskbar pinning after Windows 7. I, I agree, uh, but still run into plenty of organizations that um, uh, have, have a need or perceived need to manage those things. But they are becoming, um, they've become more difficult, to, to say the least. Yep, hoping they add better start menu customizations in Windows 11 24H2. Uh, been some talk about them changing what can be turned on and off. Uh, agreed. Again, um, 
I think a lot of us have given up just because it's gotten more difficult. Um, but there's, there's definitely still a need for it. Um, in, in a lot of organizations. So hopefully we see some improvements on that front in the future. All right. Wow. We've got a long list of links to share today. That's fantastic. Great questions, by the way, as always. So I've got that. Let me make sure I haven't missed anything. Close these tabs. So James uh, has a comment here for dynamic groups. We use dynamic groups based on license IDs. Need to grab the SKU uh, ID of just the feature to pick Intune, Intune Suite, Visio, etc. cetera. Um, so there is some great documentation. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. I'm looking for. Here we go. Some fantastic documentation on how to build some of the rules uh, on dynamic groups and what is available for the dynamic groups. Uh, let's see what we've got for SKUs in here. So here we go. Uh, James had a follow-up comment. Dynamic group with user assigned plan, then add in the service plan ID with the enabled flag. Yep, so that looks like probably right here, I'm guessing. That's a great one. Uh, if you are working with dynamic groups, definitely recommend keeping this documentation on hand. Um, I find myself referencing it regularly. So I'm going to share that as well. Great stuff. Um, yeah, just one uh, another follow-up comment here uh, from James. If I remember, you have a few spots where Intune is assigned as, uh, I think, has a different service ID plan for the different SKUs. Different for E3, E5, A3, A5. Just double-check on that. Absolutely. Something I always try to pay attention to um, going between E licenses and A licenses. Uh, oftentimes, you'll have exactly what what you're saying. There will be different ID. The name will be slightly different. Uh, always something to pay attention to. Great comments. Thank you. Dan's asking, do you have any idea why they put Microsoft Intune management extension in the start menu when you can't even open it? Um, uh, so that it's uh, available to users. I don't. I don't have any idea why they do that. Um, I assume there's some sort of reason for it. 
Um, so let's see, do I have a uh, sure I have a device here? Let's go with this one. So just for reference, what Dan's asking about is the Intune management extension um, allows us to do, among other things, uh, uh, deploy Win32 applications uh, or assign Win32 applications from Intune to our devices. And the um, Intune management extension is something that gets installed as a means to um, allow that to happen. Uh, so you can see this is the this is where Dan is referencing. This shows up in the start menu uh, right here. You will also see when this gets installed, it shows up as a service. Uh, but Dan, I do not know why that shows up in the start menu. It's a great question. There we go. Uh, so we see the Intune Management Extension, or you may see it referred to as the IME, uh, show up here as an installed and running uh, service as well. Um, but primarily, it's, it, it's uh, as Dan mentioned, it's used in the background. There's no GUI for it. Um, it's just sort of there. Uh, to make these to make these other uh, processes work for us, I'm sure there is a reason. Um, I unfortunately just do not know what that reason might be. Let's see if I can find out though. Uh, Kurt's asking, is restarting the IME service a quick way to get all policies to refresh? Uh, what it is good for, oh, let's see if I can find this now. Is this. So policy refresh if you're on an endpoint, uh, unless you want to trigger this remotely from the Intune Admin Center or for, uh, from PowerShell with Graph, go to an endpoint, access work in school, and then we can sync policy from here. By restarting the IME, Johan has a blog post here, which actually is one of the, uh, uh, has one of the highest views of all of the blog posts on deployment research, interestingly enough, um, <clears throat> will allow you to force an application reinstall if needed. So I'm going to share this one as well. Uh, faster than a reboot? Uh, yes, I would say in most cases, but not all. Uh, I have had times where I've tried to sync or, or something like that, and the policies haven't been refreshed as, uh, as I expected. I've gone through, then I've gone through a reboot and they've refreshed just fine afterwards. But typically, um, as long as I wait a few moments after a new policy has been assigned uh, or changed, it's not too long before I can trigger a sync and the endpoints get updated, in my experience. Uh, I'm sure that's not necessarily going to be everybody's, but um, in my experience, uh, I'm going to try that before I try rebooting the device for sure.
All right. Any other? Oh, yeah, we did just have a question come in. Uh, basically, what um, can I tell what Config Manager client dependencies has on the Windows firewall? I've noticed that if the firewall service is in a stopped state, then the client won't get any updates. Interesting. So uh, from a from a config manager client and firewall perspective, uh, that is well documented. Um, that you're going to find here. And As we scroll down here, you'll see client uh, communication to various um, uh, services, I'll say. Uh, but let's see if there's anything in here about... I've not run into that, Jamal, where um, if the firewall service is stopped... Background filtering service. So Dan's asking, is the background filtering service running? Uh, remember that and the firewall having to both be stopped for it to actually be off. So let's see if there are any other points here I'm missing. Uh, that said, there are not that many... Um, client ports that need to be open should you be running into issues uh, on the host firewall. So depending on what you're doing, um, you can see there are a number of <clears throat> ports that need to be open to say a, um, oh, thank you, Dan, just a not background filtering service, base filtering engine. Um, so if you're going to, if your clients are being, communicating to a distribution point. We need 80 and 443 uh, open. Um, if we're going to be using uh, Pixie uh, to a distribution point, we need a couple of other things open there. Um, so not related to ports. Uh, just a follow-up comment here. Uh, not related to ports. See if there are any other points on this. No, I mean, in, in my experience, if there are communication issues and the client itself is healthy, um, I would say either it's been uh, um, the ports were not, um, the correct ports were not configured on the host itself or on an enterprise firewall, um, depending on uh what issues you might be seeing. Firewalls not enforced or not. Yeah, I would have to. So Jamal just followed up here and uh, just, I'm reading the comment, firewall is not enforced, so we're not controlling any traffic. I have not personally come across that. Um, But if anybody else has, uh, if you have any other details. Um, maybe could find something. But mostly in my experience, it's just been managing those ports. 
Um, of course, you can run into issues with, and I don't know that this, uh, I, I don't think based on what you're saying, Jamal, I don't know that this is uh, um, uh, related. But of course, if you've got uh, proxies or anything like that, any uh, any inspection systems or anything in between the site server and the client, that can definitely disrupt communication. Um, but all, all things equal, typically what I've just had to deal with on the client side are uh, these firewall ports, either on the host or an enterprise firewall. So I'm sorry to say I don't think I have a good answer for uh, this particular problem. All right. Well, with that said, uh, we are at 531. Um, so I want to thank everybody for joining today. I uh, really appreciate you um, uh, joining and spending the last uh, hour with me uh, and everybody here in the chat. Appreciate the great questions as well as sharing uh, some of the knowledge here in the chat as always. Um, hope you have a great rest of your week and I hope we'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody.